Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Leaders Toolbox podcast. I'm Andre Young. I hope that you've had an amazing day so far, and I look forward to making it even a bit better with the special guest that we have here with you today, all the way from Switzerland. She is a phenomenal leader and rock star, Madeline Shabungia from Switzerland and head of learning and, and development at Nestle. Welcome to the show. Hi, Andre. I'm really, really honored to be uh, with you today. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Oh, it is an absolute pleasure. I love getting to speak with leaders, especially leaders worldwide. And we all talk about enhancing leadership and work-life harmony. So I hope you don't mind if we just dive right into all of that. Let's go, Andre. <laughs> One of the things that I see and I get to see and help with leaders and employees in front line with, especially in the United States, is that employees seem to be really struggling. When I ask what leaders, what their people are struggling with, that they're struggling with burnout. I never want to assume that the same is true everywhere. So I want to ask you, what do you see more frontline employees? What's their biggest struggle that you see they're struggling with right now. Mm -hmm. No, um, indeed, Andre, and um, we are all employees huh, as well. So I do see as well huh, a lot uh, these days of, of uh, burnouts. That that's that's really a reality. We have to to face it, and uh, especially you know since since COVID, huh, this uh, the number of uh, of burnout has been increasing. We all know that. And uh, yeah, I'm also reflecting, you know, what we can we do to improve mental health, to really mm. support our employees um, in, in this new reality that we are facing now. So working remotely, where we tend to lose a bit the personal connection and, and people being a bit more isolated at home. So one of the things I was um, reflecting, and I would love also to pick your brain on that and, and have a conversation about that is... Uh, I believe one of the reasons is also, you know, this VUCA world we are living uh, in at the moment. Huh? So this everything is kind of volatile, uncertain, uh, complex, ambiguous. That's really the world we are we are living in, yeah. and I think it contributes as well uh, to to this um, to this health problem which uh, which which we have today. Huh? Uh, we need to have the ability to adapt to changing priorities and and and, and this type of things and. Uh, yeah, it can it can definitely uh, contribute to that. And um, another uh, thing I observe uh, as well, you know, just meeting people in corridors and and, and discussing around is everyone feel, feels overwhelmed, you know. Yes. And I I believe a fact of our perception we can we can discuss, but for sure huh, this this change of priorities and the need of being agile contributes uh, yes. to this. And probably as well um, associated with the fact that now more and more we are bombarded with, you know, emails, the chat, the social media, the yeah. calls. I mean, I don't know where we are heading to, but it's getting worse and worse, you know. So at some point we need to do something about that and mm. probably reflect a little bit. Are we making good use of all these communication tool, tools? Uh, because it, it starts to be very overwhelming. I, and I believe that these two components combined yeah. are actually quite toxic. Yeah. You, you have used, guys listening, Madeline has dropped some nuggets and some keywords. And you really did from what people and what so many employees and leaders are struggling with is mental health, being overwhelmed, and being bombarded. And one of the things that I see, because I just experienced, I get to travel a lot. I literally just got off of a plane less than 48 hours ago. By the time I hit the ground and I got into my house at five o'clock, it was time to pick up my son from, from, from school uh, for football workouts and sports training. And then my, uh, <laughs> my oldest daughter called me and said, dad, I want to buy a car. Can you come help me so I don't get bullied you know, by the car dealer. So I'm like, okay, great. So get in the car and do that. I have a three-year-old that's saying, you know, daddy, come and do tea time with me. All the while responding to emails for business. 
the overwhelming and bombarding. And when we are working through COVID, when so many people started working remotely, all of that is happening right at their, their desk. They are playing multiple roles from wife or husband, mom or dad, to a brother and sister, to a father, all of this stuff. Within seconds, your role switches so fast and the emails are not stopping and your employer can't see that you're drowning. The, the other thing, when you talk about bombarding, I was doing emails right before our call <laughs> and my phone would not stop <laughs> ringing, dinging and chiming with a friend's birthday coming up, with my son asking me a question, with uh, Zoom calls changing. How can you ignore the noise? Yeah, imagine. So we are constantly multi multitasking, Andre. And uh, I'm reading also articles which say that also with the social media, you know, when you just scroll, scroll, right. scroll, scroll, your, right. your, your brain is constantly, right. you know, uh, solicited. And um, yeah, our attention span is shrinking, yeah? constantly shrinking and shrinking. Yes. So it's really something we need to to all uh, a bit be a bit more disciplined as well. How do we protect ourselves? We do, yes. I don't know, digital detox from time to time. We we rest, um, we disconnect. Um, but it's it's really something that each and every one of us, and huh, we have a responsibility to take care of our own uh, health. Well, I want to because that's leading into my question because you just gave a few tips. And I want to ask you what you do and what you would suggest your employees do that you as a leader would be okay with because you use the word protection. And when I talk about my definition of leadership, that's one of the five key words. And it's one of the words that rarely gets talked about. And I believe that leaders, we must first protect our people from themselves. They have a lot of bad habits, you mm -hmm. know, and through, and through COVID and, you know, t uh, time away from work and out of the office, those habits can be ingrained. So how do you protect people from themselves? Then how do we protect people from us as leaders? Because we may <laughs> overwhelm somebody intentionally or, or not intentionally and not know that it's happening. And then leaders must protect their time. So <laughs> that's what you're talking about. Leaders must protect their time. So what do you do to best protect your time? Or you would suggest that your employees do that as a leader, you'd be okay with? Hmm. It's a it's a good question. So one of the things I do, uh, first of all, and it's uh, one of my mentors actually, which uh, suggested that uh, that tip. And at first, I was not so much uh, convinced. Oh, do you think I can do that? I tried it. Uh, it's really to block sometime in your calendar every way, uh, every day. Sorry. So for instance, from for me, it's you know after four thirty, I'm blocked because I need to wrap up my day. I need to you know read all those emails. I need to uh, take some time to reflect and prepare for the next day. And this is a buffer which really helped me a bit slow down, stop everything because else you know it's back to back meetings, huh? Yes. All day long. So it's a very practical thing you can do. Um, to and you can also advise your team members uh, to apply and for me it works amazingly well so mm. small tip I can only encourage anyone to start with that that was a small tip however so huge in regarding work-life harmony and leadership because I tell people I have the world's best executive assistant I am extremely lucky of a person to be able to have an executive assistant let alone the greatest However, if you have a phone, because we were just talking about your phone ringing, dinging, and chiming, we all have an executive assistant. Once you put you in your calendar, you will tend to work around what you've blocked off. And I put things in my calendar, but if I don't put me in my calendar, and if I don't put my wife, dates with my wife, it don't sound spontaneous, but if I don't put it in there, it may not happen. So once you put, like when I, when I was an employee, Nobody could take lunch from me. I was taking lunch. But all of a sudden you're working from home or you're motivated, you're an inspired and you know, a motivated employee. All of a sudden you'll give up lunch. But now everybody's expecting you to give up lunch and they don't care if you eat. You set the standard. So blocking off time for your lunch or breaks. Um, Absolutely. The other thing, one of the things that I did and not everybody can do this, I understand. I tell any company that I'm working with that I do not really get into my emails until 11 a.m. 
I might wake up and scan for the money or agreements or pending things. You got to do the money, you know, but I might scan. And if I send one early, that's on me. I can do that. But I don't get into the nitty gritty of emails and the quicksand of emails until 11 a.m. But I've set it up that way. So maybe it's 8 a.m. for you or 830. But I say the first thing you do in the morning cannot be to wake up and get into your emails. You want to hate your job in five years? <laughs> do that every day. No, it's a, it's a good one, Andre. Also, uh, another one, uh, when you ask how can you protect your team, you know, sometimes the team members, they could be tempted to say, hey, you know, I did that uh, this last evening or this weekend. And they might think, you know, it will be perceived as, you know, I'm fully into it, I'm engaged, I'm committed. But right. this is exactly where, as a leader, you need to intervene already and to say, hey, look, I really love to see the passion. I really keep that up for sure. But, you know, working during the evenings or the weekends are done for you to rest, for you to disconnect. Yes. So please, uh, so this is when you really need to um, intervene, I would say, and um, not let this uh, continue. You, you, you guys listening, this is why Madeline is on this show, because you are emphasizing that protection. Because what would happen when that employee does that work, either because they love it, they're trying to succeed, um, they have nothing else to do. It could be a lot of reasons why they're emailing at 11 a.m., 11 p.m. at night or on a Saturday afternoon. Um, if they are promoted, everyone under them thinks that they have to do the same thing to get promoted. So now we start a culture of not respecting time or work-life harmony. And you might lose some great people who would be great at that position but don't want to do it that way. It doesn't have to be done that way. It's just assumed now. So yeah. I, I love what you mentioned with protecting your people. Now, now, what about leaders? What do you see? And maybe leaders are struggling with the same thing. And I know they are from burnout, uh, but they can't show it to their team. You know, at least their 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 direct reports and employees. That's true. What do you see as a leader that your leadership peers are struggling with? Yeah. I think the higher you go, you know, in, in the hierarchy or hierarchy and the more responsibility you get, um, of course, you also have this workload or overload and sometimes even, even worse. Huh? So you have to uh, protect yourself to be able to protect your team. So mm. it, it becomes even more important, you know, right? And um, also another thing I learned from discussing with, with leaders, with mentors, etc., is they, they really taught me that I have to start um, thinking how I am going to recover. You know, each time I invest, I, I make a special effort. I need to be really intentional about, okay, after this recording of this webinar, et cetera, I need to block some time. I just need to take some one hour off, off you know. So, and all these things I, I, I learned from, from more senior uh, people. And it's really about, uh, investing in your own health, in your own well-being, because it becomes as much important. This time off when you're working, not mm. working, becomes as much important as the time when, when you're working. By the way, how many times we go for a run or for a jog and, you know, do you have an idea of coming in, you know, or we find that solution that we've been yes. struggling and we've been, you know, searching in all directions and we could not find the solution and suddenly, you know, it comes out. Yeah. So actually, our brain continues working. So it's not that, you know, uh, we, we stop working and, and yeah, our brain continues to, to, to be productive in some, in some way. So what I did, and um, that's really a more of a personal thing, perhaps, but for me, investing in my health meant at least once a year or maybe twice, um, I go for a retreat. You know, I go for two, three days. Um, in a, what I call solo trip, so with people I don't know, <laughs> in a mountain or somewhere, and we do yoga and we do hiking. Or, and this is the way I reach out because I love mountain, I love sport, and you do three to four hours sport a day and you eat super healthy. So this is maybe not something that would, you know, suit to everyone, but I can tell you after these three, four days, you feel like it's a rebirth. <laughs> I, ca I cannot believe the nuggets that you are dropping here today because I wrote this down and this is the quote of the day. As a leader, you have to be able to protect yourself to protect your team. And you, you used a key word 
called recovery. And I was an athlete for a long time. And they talk about rest. Now, as an individual, I don't need a lot of rest. I am actually turned off by resting a lot. I don't need it. I don't need a lot of sleep. I don't need a lot of downtime. I don't need a lot of vacation time. However, I and we all need recovery. So can, you know, and I, and I wrote an article called A Leader's Vacationing. We must be able to take vacations and maybe it's to the mountains for a solo retreat. Uh, maybe it's on a cruise. Maybe you want to binge watch your favorite show on Netflix and stay in all day. No matter what it is, vacations and recovery are necessities, not luxuries. And as long as we're doing it in this way, like for me, I look at a recovery as, are we digesting some of the things that we took in? Because just sitting down doing nothing, it's half-hearted recovery. Let's digest the experience of completing that project. Of When I, when I speak uh, at speaking events or conferences or I do a training with an organization, when I come home, I used to get off the plane and then do 15, you know, e you know, a thousand emails and Zoom calls the next day. I haven't recovered. One, what did I take away? What was my biggest takeaway from that experience? What did I learn? What was my biggest moment? What would I change or fine tune? Like all of these things to recover and then schedule as little as possible so I can be a great husband, be a great dad. And if I'm doing that, my wife doesn't mind me going because she knows she's getting a greater me when I come home. So I love that part of protecting yourself. There's that word again. And recovery. You guys listening. Recovery. What do you do to best nurse yourself? So I, I want to ask you, you go yeah, to, the, to just, the mountains. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, sorry. I just wanted to add, you know, um, sometimes it might be a bit difficult to track uh, your own, you know, health. So very important to listen to your bodies and the signals or symptoms that uh, you, the body is, is sending. And for me, I, I bought this one, this ring, Aura ring. Maybe you know it. I'm doing a bit of advertising for the company. That's all right. But advertising. I well. love it. It tells me how well I sleep, how, you know, my heart rate, my oxygen, my body wow. temperatures, everything. So that helps me actually to track, you know, my, my physical state. And uh, whenever I see that I deviate a bit you know i need to correct mm. need to do some sports to, to to sleep a bit more to adjust my evening routine this type of thing so i think what we're talking about is really really important for for a leader so the recovery the, the time off as i said is as much as important as the time uh, the working time what's the name of the ring by the way it's called aura ring o-u-r-r-a sorry Awesome. You, you guys listening, please look into the ring. I'm going to find the link. It's going to be in this podcast somewhere because that's such a cool daily thing that you can do that will give you feedback. And leadership is about being able to receive feedback and then do something about it. So I love the part that you mentioned where you once or twice a year, you schedule something. And I call it the light at the end of the tunnel. It's always great to know that something's coming. So give that to yourself. But on the daily basis, you use the ring and like for me, I started going for a walk. I take a walk one time a day. So I can either listen to podcasts, I can listen to motivational videos, or I can listen to nothing and have my own ideas or thought or be able to disconnect. Is there anything that you do on a daily um, outside of the ring? Yeah, I think um, mindfulness or meditation uh, or listening to music or meditation is also a very important um, way by the way um, I happened to participate myself to a training um, a few months ago and I was you know with other other leaders in the training we started to chat around and then I started to ask one okay how do you do and the one was saying I do yoga and another one I do meditation and the other one I do meditation and I do meditation and all of a sudden, I realized that everyone was doing meditation except me, you know, and that's how I started, actually. I was like, maybe there's something with meditation. <laughs> I should, And it's all about, you know, focusing your mind and stopping the noise in your brain again. Huh? So um, it's very difficult at the beginning to concentrate. Yeah. But then you start feeling instantly the benefits, like uh, with breathing a little bit, etc. It's um, It helps a lot. Well, it can take five minutes a day, by the way. It's right. not something that... Yeah. It doesn't have to take a long time, but one of the things that you said even before meditation is that you asked other people 
what they do. I just I released an article in a video called "A Leaders Ask," and sometimes we do a poor job asking. Um, but my last job as an employee was in sales, and I never forget going up to each and every salesperson and asking, "How do you sell?" That's all I said. Everyone had a different answer, so I was able to take this piece, this piece, this piece and mix it with my piece. And I married the version that worked for me. And I learned too, that the person you may have thought was the worst salesperson had the worst numbers still had great advice. Maybe they weren't using their own advice because they've, they've been doing it for a while and they don't need to, they've already made a lot of money. They're, they're on their way to retirement just because you don't think a certain person might have a great answer doesn't mean that they don't. They might have a great answer that they're not using or used before and you can still learn from them. So I love the fact that you ask other people and as leaders of your own life or in or in a, or in a workforce, ask people. So you are in leadership and development. For anybody listening who doesn't know what that means for an organization, can you briefly explain what you do and I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a couple of questions and you answer them how you want. What do you do? What do you love most about it? And what <laughs> frustrates you the most about it? OK. Uh, so what I do, uh, as you explained at the beginning, I'm heading the learning and development for Nestle in R&D. So the research and development part of, of Nestle. So it's um, four uh, four thousand employees um, globally and we are. Uh, spread over 23 um, uh, entities and uh, geographies, actually. So it makes it also very interesting. We are globally uh, globally uh, present. And look, the job is all about um, creating, crafting, learning programs, or learning, learning tools for people to upskill and to make um, the employee and the leaders future ready. So it's all about identifying key strategic uh, competencies uh, that we might have, and it can be digital, it can be innovation, or this, this type of, of skills. And then creating programs uh, so that really people can, can enroll, uh, can experience, and on the job uh, develop. So I, I guess it's more or less explaining what, what learning and development is doing. No, I, I, I love it. What I hear, and you correct me if I'm wrong, you, your team, and anybody in learning and development, they keep their people, their leaders, their employees, their organization elite. You keep them elite. You need to always, I tell people, you always need to be upgrading your people, your, uh, your, your process, and your technology. Always need to be upgrading it. And if you wait until you have to, it is way too late. So that's what you, it seems like you guys do. That's exactly that, Andre. And uh, to answer your other questions of what I love in this job is actually the impact that you can uh, that you can have. Because uh, of course, as a leader, you and it's very important you need to develop your team members. But it can be five, it can be ten people, it can be more. Here in this job, of course, we can impact hundreds of, of people or thousands of people, you know, indirectly. So they might not see us, but they enjoy a program or they take advantage of a program which we have created and. It's, you can, I cannot explain, it's quite hard to put words, um, you know, on the feeling uh, and the satisfaction of seeing someone deploy his or her wings, you know, yeah. someone that you have, you have been struggling, perhaps stuck in the career because he or she was lacking a certain skill and then through a mentoring, a coaching, through uh, certain experiences that you have created, um, being suddenly able to you know, have identify a next step or a current next step and then to, to go for it, to have promotions, to have, you know, all of all of a sudden all this happening. And uh, it's very rewarding to uh, to contribute because of course the person does most of the job. Yeah. But you slightly contribute uh, to to this and it's uh, very satisfying. That's awesome. And that must be so rewarding to watch that happen and watch people move on and go on. Um, so every job has a pro and concern. Okay. And it might be a small concern and that's okay. But what's the hardest part of your job that you would say or something that's frustrating? And, you know, I, I asked my assistant this when I was hire, when I was hiring her and I never forget her answer. She said, when a leader doesn't have a clear vision or communicate it and I don't know what to do. 
And it, it, it stood out for me. I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, so you really are looking for leadership. So I always like asking people, what frustrates you the most about your job? And be honest. Yeah, absolutely. For me, is um, that uh, we must evolve the way we are learning. And now, by the way, uh, with everything accelerating, you know, learning takes a more important um, uh, place. And when I ask around people, you know, what learning means for them, almost all the time the word training comes in and uh, you know and and what we people would think is okay i need to register to a training once a year i tick the box etc i'm I'm not saying it's i'm generalizing and just to make the 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 picture and i believe andre this is no longer um, in the world we live in this is no longer the way we should learn like we should totally and radically now pivot um, and rather go for, you know, learning on the job, huh? because mm-hmm. we know that 70% of what we learn is coming from our experience, on the job yes. experience, 20% through others, so in, in, in interaction with others, through coaching, through mentoring, etc. And only 10% from formal training, you know. So having said that, you haven't really said everything. And um, yeah, and people don't have time because we are already overwhelmed. We, we discussed about that, but it can, again, only be five minutes a day, just learning five minutes a day to stimulate and yes. to fuel yes. your motivation, your creativity, just one uh, reading one article or something that you like, yes. of course, you have to yes. be interested about it. Um, but I think we, we need to operate. And this, this shift is happening, but it's slow, of course, it's change management. And that frustrates me sometimes you know, yeah. to see that when people <laughs> tell me training, I go for training, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And you are so right. I like the more, well, two things, more bite-sized learning and then on-the-job training. I, I, I came up with an online, pre-recorded online training of my biggest program. I know that most companies will never use it the way I said because it takes too long and everybody's too busy to do it the way I said do it. Um, therefore, they may not do it. Some will, some won't. But I created these shorter lunch and learns, 20 minutes, you know, 20 minutes short lunch and learns. And I'm like, everybody's eyebrow goes up when they hear that part, because I can buy my team lunch or do this and we can do this in 20 minutes and be gone. And I was speaking at one conference and somebody in the audience says, well, all of our people are on TikTok. What are we supposed to do? Have our trainings on TikTok? I said, why not? Why not have somebody in your L&D department create TikTok videos about what you want them to know? They could be standing at the grocery store or at the, um, you know, walking in somewhere with their kids and your video comes up and it's more interesting to them there than them sitting in a formal training, you know? So uh, do you remember, and maybe you have them in Switzerland or not, you remember the employee trainings where you were supposed to watch a video on your laptop and you would get a check mark at the end and you would turn it on and go vacuum the floor, clean your apartment, do anything else. And then you get the check mark at the end and you get your certificate. What is that? <laughs> so it was hard. My, I, I took my daughter to uh, get her car, her first real car uh, yesterday. So I walked in, there were only two salesmen available. One of the salesmen, I said, can you help me? He said, I'm sorry, I wish I could. I'm in training right now. He sat there for three hours. Yes, we were there for over three hours. And he sat there looking at a screen, looking dejected and bored out of his mind, reading a screen for three hours. And he's supposed to be in sales doing people. I can totally imagine. No, and I I think you got it. You nailed it, Um, Andre, also with your videos, which I watched uh, the five minute videos that you that you produce are just amazing and are captivating as well. I oh, I watch you. them till the end on the five types of leaders, etc. I can, oh. by the way, encourage anyone to 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 watch them. And I think that's really you know five minutes per day. Everyone has that. You know, you, you grab a coffee and it's a moment or you take a small break and and you enjoy a, a nice video and inspire yourself on on other things. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for the shout out. I'll take it all that much appreciated. But like you said something, if we don't have five minutes, you have bigger issues in your life that we need to resolve if you don't have five minutes. Um, So I love these questions. It's time for rapid fire time. But before we get into rapid fire, I almost forgot. And I do not want to forget this because this is too big and too good. You are in the midst of writing a book. (laughs) <laughs> then I'm going to be quiet and I want you to tell us and the world 
about your book? What's what what it's going to be about? How it's going to impact the world? Wow, wow. <laughs> look, it's uh, you know uh, hob- at my hobby time at the moment. I'm I'm writing this this book. You know, the idea originally was because uh, in my very early career, um, I unfortunately didn't have the chance to have a leader that really took me under her or his wings and and really developed me. And as a consequence for years, I did not really like uh, grow, right? Grow, sorry. Um, so I thought perhaps there are other people in my situation today, like people in early in their career, etc., that feel a bit a bit stuck, especially in corporates, you know, in big companies, it can easily be the, be the, the case. So I wanted, and I, I started during COVID, you know, when we were all stuck at home and yeah, so what should I do? <laughs> Let's write a book. <laughs> I started to, um, to write this book where I, my aim is to have tools that I give to employees and could apply also to, to leaders that could prepare you mentally yeah, to, to remove all these limiting beliefs, etc. So it's kind mm. of mental preparation. So there are tools for, for, for that one, um, as well as tools that are more around, I would say, a new set of behaviors that you could adopt in order to be more visible, to, yeah, to boost your, your, your career. So that's a bit the idea. It's not yet there. I'm just, as you said, in, in, in the middle of it. Um, but hopefully this um, project comes to life. So I'm crossing my fingers. I, I'm crossing. With, I'm not even crossing my fingers because I know you're going to do it. And I know it's going to be great. And you guys listening, based off of the nuggets that you've heard from this call already, this this podcast already, when it's ready, I will let you know. Madeline will let you know. And please pick it up because somebody with your experience and what you've shared already you're going to be a gift to the world with the, with the tools that you're going to have. And I'm big on tools. I got the leader's toolbox. The world needs more tools and we cannot get enough of them. So there's tools everywhere. Let's do it. I, so please keep me informed as you finish up. Thank you so much. Henry. All right. So rapid fire time. I always like to do the POW, the P-O-W, the positive of the week. So professionally and personally for you, What's been your POW, your POW, your big positives of the week? My positive of the week. Oh, wow. It's my daughter because my daughter has exams this week. And she just sent me a message that it went well. I must say it was quite a bit of stress uh, because, you know, you have to juggle as well from professional and then be there at home when she had she was super stressed, you know, the day before. and um, And yeah, and in the end, it went well. So I feel also a certain relief, and that was that was my big uh, positive of the week. Yes. Nice. Favorite place to travel and why? Oh wow! Favorite favorite place to travel and why? Ah well, my most beautiful travel ever that I did uh, actually a couple of years ago was Tahiti. So Polynesia, uh, I must say, it was <laughs> really something. Uh, you cannot imagine and uh, i really loved it because it's just amazing i mean the landscape the the the, the beaches and, and everything is just uh, wow and i could not like find that anywhere else so far let's see so um really really loved it a bit far away but uh, really loved it awesome last question what's a final word or tip that you want to leave listeners with here today that will allow them to live their best life, either professionally, personally? What's your final parting words you want to give the world? My final word or final tip. Hmm, interesting. I would say uh, sometimes we tend to be a bit too harsh on, on ourselves and to have high standards. So that's also the case, the case for me. So think of when you when you think of your workload, what is the part that is self-inflicted versus mm. the part that is coming really from your objectives, etc. And uh, already there, you can start a little bit uh, reduce the workload. What is truly necessary? Where what is the twenty percent of my job that is going to produce the eighty percent of of results? Right, that would be my my tip. I try myself to remind uh, me uh, of this every day to. Uh, to focus on on the most important things. Wow, that is so huge. Uh, my wife and I were talking last week, 
and she says, you know, I give a hundred percent, I give a hundred percent, you know, to work. And I said, respectfully, do you think your CEO cares that you give a hundred percent? Or do you think they care that the job gets done? And sometimes the job can get done because I guarantee you there's somebody on your team that's giving 35% and the stock and the job's still getting done. Sometimes what you mentioned, that self-inflicting thousand percent that you want to do may not be needed. You know? Um, so it, it's it sounds harsh to say, it sounds counterintuitive. Uh, but I love what you, what you mentioned. Sometimes, you know, it, it, it's self-inflicting and we're doing more than we may need to do uh, instead of getting the job done in a way that we can be proud of ourselves. So, um, or that the organization needs. It's about a marriage. Marry what you want to do, want, want to do and give with what they need most. So it's not just your way. So Madeline, thank you so much <laughs> for being on the show here today. Um, where can people uh, connect with you or follow you? I know you're on LinkedIn and that's how we connected. So wherever you're comfortable sharing, where can people connect with you? Yeah, LinkedIn is the best place to find me. Absolutely, yes. Thank you so much, Andre. It was a lot, a lot of fun for me as well. Really enjoyed. So again, a big, big, big thank you for inviting me in your show. <laughs> Absolute pleasure. You guys listening, I hope you had an amazing time with us. Please check the links um, you know, in the bio to find out more about Madeline, to find out more about her upcoming book, to find out more about Nestle, to find out more about Switzerland. I want to go um, and click the link to link up with uh, Madeline in LinkedIn. Guys, thanks so much. Uh, please remember, listening to this today, you now know something new. Knowing something new without applying that something new can lead to nothing new. So enjoy your evolution. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Andre.